So we are back taking more questions with Randy Kirk in regards to Tesla bot. Uh, you guys left so many great questions, more great comments. Uh, we're going to address them. If you want to leave more comments, let's do it. But in the meantime, I'm Brian. Welcome to my Tesla weekend. How are you, Randy? I'm wonderful. Thank you. Um, relaxing in Kauai. Oh, yes. Uh, via time travel. Via the, time travel, yes. Via, for the viewers at home. Yeah. By the way, time travel, it's so wonderful. A gentleman asked if he could borrow my time machine, and I said, you missed your appointment yesterday, which I just <laughs> scheduled. But that's the problem is non-time travelers, they don't get it. So let's address some of the uh, more interesting comments that we've received. If this is such a straightforward endeavor, will there not be new entrants in the market? What does Tesla have that other large manufacturing companies do not? What is the competitive advantage? Yeah, well, the competitive advantage is number one, vision. So I always say that the number one thing any manufacturer, well, any business owner can have, the number one aspect of, that will drive your success is gonna be vision. So Elon is the one that said, look, this is possible. We have all the components that are necessary. We can do this, um, let's do it. Uh, that's vision, okay? Number two, he has the software. <laughs> Nobody else has the software. Um, he's already got the software, it's already been operational, it's out there in thousands and thousands, millions of vehicles, and those mi millions of vehicles are producing content every single day, data every single day, that data is being analyzed, is being thrown back into neural nets, and then being used as train to train, uh, nobody else has that. Uh, in addition to that, he's got the hardware capability, the engineering staff, to be able to design and put together the, the robot 100% vertically, he's already made that statement, 100% vertical, every single component, plastic components, metal components, uh, you know, soft tissue components, all the components are gonna be made at Tesla. Um, and then he has this fast iteration environment that nobody else has. Joe Justice, who is the guy who wrote the book on how to do this fast iteration, um, uh, agile manufacturing says, no, Tesla is agile plus. They are on another level. Most manufacturing companies have not got to, most, almost no manufacturing companies in the world today, not automotive companies. You, you don't have to just look at automotive or robotics or anything else. Most, almost no manufacturing companies are even at agile at this point. And Tesla is at agile plus, according to the guy who wrote the book. So those are a few, just a couple of ideas of where they might have some moats. Uh, so I would agree with you. I would say, first of all, the engineering talent is second to none. We talked last week about how the applicant pool, you have a 1% chance of getting the job. They get to pick the, the top 1% candidate for every single position. And if you've been to Tesla events, if you've been to, if you've worked with any of these people, you can see that that is true, it is the case. Uh, the other advantage is unlike previous bots, now this question is about new entrants, but unlike previous bots, this was designed from day one to be manufactured. All the others were designed as proof of concept with no consideration to cost. And then the third big thing is what they have is all the automotive experience. It never would have occurred to me to simulate crash test the bot the same way you do a car, but think of how much money they save by not having things break and how much money they save by not overbuilding where they don't need to. You know all the other players use the Guess and Bagali method where they had to just kind of eyeball it and hope it's right and fix it if it isn't. Those are tremendous moats. And by the same token, you could say, well, how could they compete in automotive? They can't. That's a much harder thing to do than this. Much harder, much harder. Yeah. Well, the other, the other side, of the, the flip side of the coin is that the TAM on this, the total addressable market is 8 billion uh, units, according to Elon. Hey, cut it in half, cut it 10%. Let's say it's really only 800 million units. Well, every company that could possibly duplicate or come close or be competitive within the next five years, seven years, will have plenty of TAM. There'll be, there'll be plenty for everybody. Even if Elon makes 50 million of them in the next seven years, somebody else can make 50 million and they still wouldn't be getting close to addressing the market. 
So this is a huge comment. I'm not going to read the whole the whole one, but it's a there's an old term amongst engineers, AM FM, actual machi machines versus effing magic. The former are what engineers design and build every day. The latter are the preserve of managers, CEOs, sci-fi fanaticists, and Musk. The idea you're going to employ a high-end humanoid robot to perform mundane uh, automatistic uh, manufacturing tasks is to reveal an ignorance that can barely be described in words, but here's 500 trying to do just that. If you have a problem like putting a cap on a bottle that can only be done, you redesign. Okay, so design first. Yeah, right. So, uh, Otherwise, you're, what you're attempting uh, to transfer difficulties of human assembly over to the much harder problem of getting a robot to do it. What this, it sounds like what this individual is saying is that there is uh, no need for bots. We just need better procedures. And I think, I, I bet you have a thought or two on that. <laughs> well, I think I mentioned on your show, so I'll try to keep it brief, is that the, the automative automation that you typically buy is, autom is created for a specific task. It is bolted to the ground or to the ceiling or the wall. It's bolted down. It's for one task. If that task changes, if you if you want to change the product, you have to change the the automation. Um, if you need more of it, you've got to add you know more of these machines. Um, if you decide that there's a better way to automate it, then you start all over in terms of automation. The concept. So therefore, for small manufacturers, even medium-sized manufacturers with smaller tasks. Commonly, there is no way to automate the task logically in terms of return on investment. Now, if you have a multi-purpose product that's not bolted to the floor, that can walk around and go from job to job, now you have a product that you come in and you teach it to do, just like a human, that's the whole idea. You teach it to put a cap on a bottle, you teach it to put a, a t-shirt on a, 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 a board, before the silk screen comes down and prints it, uh, you teach it to drill a hole into a, a, a product and then put a screw in a nut and a bolt, whatever. Um, you know, it could be doing all these different tasks on different days and then sealing the package when it's done and pushing it out towards UPS. The thing we, we should have mentioned on the previous question, the big, big difference is the AI. Previous robots, if you want your Boston Dynamics humanoid robot to perform a novel task for the first time, you need to code it. And if that task, like you said, changes, there's only so much it can do. The AI isn't there. That's the difference is I should be able to t speak to you in plain English or any other language. I mean, wouldn't it be handy that your bot is bilingual on the job site? and not bilingual, but all lingual, uh, and perform new tasks that have never, that it's never seen before, just by either, either asking the cloud or just reasoning it out. <clears throat> That's a tremendous advantage. At the end of this, he says, Optimus only exists in an attempt to reinvent Tesla as a tech company and boost its share price. That much is very clear. Well, at least to those of us that have some knowledge of robotics and have designed and built manufacturing machines for real. Well, one of the problems, one of the problems in the entire world that I'm just gonna to talk to this gentleman as kindly as I can. I have an undergraduate degree in psychology, I already mentioned I went to law school. I was a manufacturer. I should not have been a man. I don't, do these look like the hands of a manufacturer? I was never intending to be a manufacturer. I was out of my class. I was not a scientist. I, I didn't, I went to, I did high school chemistry. I did no college chemistry. And I was a plastics manufacturer, having to figure out how to deal with plastics all day, all day long. Oh, I became the largest manufacturer of bicycle water bottles in the world. How did I do that? I didn't know anything about plastics and I didn't know anything about printing on, printing on plastics and I didn't know anything about chemistry and I didn't know anything about manufacturing, but somehow I did it. Sometimes it takes an outsider to come into the world of the insiders and go, oh, how come they're not doing that? Because sometimes the insiders are all going, you can't do that. I can't tell you how many people told me I could not print four color process on low density, low density polyethylene bottles, the kind you squeeze because oh. it's too hard to put those dots in exactly the right place four times when you've got a soft surface. I know that's getting into the weeds, but I was told by every expert 
you'll never be able to do that. Well, and then for Disney, we did 11 spot colors. Not 11. Just, not just four, we did 11 <clears throat> spot colors to the company in the, in the world who's probably the most persnickative about getting it exactly perfect. So yes, sometimes it takes an outsider to come in and tell all the insiders, sorry, fellas, you're living in the past. And you saw the, I'm just gonna call them kids running the program. These people are, yeah. so many of them under 30, so many of them probably under 25. They don't know what can't be done, right. which is part of the reason they can do it. Right. And the idea that Tesla is reinventing itself as a tech company is hilarious. <laughs> yeah, right. Yes, reinventing as in an attempt to boost its share price. Why, why would they even want to boost the share price? What, who, how, what, I don't, Elon has hit all of his performance targets that are, you know, it's uh, the, the share price doesn't, he already has more money than you could spend in a thousand lifetimes, right. unless you wanted to do something insane like go to Mars. Mars. <laughs> Ronald Roy says, highly speculative. I haven't seen any evidence of a bot doing any work. Does it matter? Well, actually, we have seen evidence of the bot doing work. Now, again, this may have been before they saw the next level uh, at the uh, at the uh, the uh, uh, shareholder shareholder. Um, but uh, at the shareholders meeting, at least, we did see the bot doing work. But we actually did see it back on March one uh, with the investor day. Also, we saw the the bot actually building another bot. And we saw it putting a bolt or some kind of a some kind of a, a fastener into its shoulder, and then using a drill a, a drill motor to, you know, uh, 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 tighten that up. So those are little minor tasks, but if you can do those little tiny minor tasks, it is absolutely a no-brainer to be able to extrapolate. I think, maybe you have to have the vision to do it, but as a manufacturer, it didn't take me three seconds to extrapolate from what I saw it doing to going, yeah. <laughs> is this gonna happen? Well, have we seen Boston Dynamics Bot do any work? It can, it can dance if you cut the clips together to make it look like it can actually do it every time. I haven't seen it do any work and I would not call it vaporware. I'd call it uh, a very fancy product that uh, will be too expensive and have limited application. Actually, actually, Boston Dynamics, uh, their products are doing work. They are in factories. They've actually sold oh, yeah. a thousand. They sold a thousand. Of the of humanoid them. ones. Of the, I think it's the dog. The dog and also the peacock. I don't know what it is, but big it's bird. For, but it's for but, reading, it's for reading gauges. Oh, wow. So it walks around the factory. It goes from gauge to gauge and it hmm. uses vision to read the gauge and report but, back on. Uh, but the humanoid is not in use. No, not yet. No, uh, but I would not call it highly speculative. I just call it um, in process. And for that matter, uh, we're gonna build a super fast car. Well, I haven't seen any proof of it. <laughs> right, but does that mean it's, okay, whatever, buddy. Uh, Lars Ostreicher says, I am not impressed by the Tesla robot knowing quite a lot about robotics. The Tesla robot is in fact only doing uh, things that robots from other companies and researchers have already done. So the Tesla rob robot is nothing new, but sold by someone who is famous. <laughs> Thoughts, Randy? Well, I am, uh, in this particular case, I'm kind of gonna agree. Uh, yes, a lot of robotic companies out there have produced robots. Uh, in fact, Tesla themselves has lots of robots, you know, just the arms or, you know, that are with a hand uh, and they're manipulating things and they're doing things. Yeah, we've had, we've had robots around for a really, really long time. I had automation in my factory and I was a little tiny factory with 100 employees. So automation is nothing new and robots are nothing new. And, but the humanoid robot with multiple functions with a, a neural net system for learning. Yeah, that's completely new. Yeah. You, so uh, this gentleman, like this individual says, you act like robots are something Tesla just dreamed up. I bet you even had to secure a patent on your bottle top. Robotics have been around for decades and there are millions of patents already claimed. Why would you presume Tesla has the patents to move forward with a commercial variant of this sort of robot? One can go back 50 years and find articulated human-like robots. So the question is, uh, are, the, are they gonna run into patent issues? 
Well, I'm going to start by being a little bit technical on the law here. And I'm, I'm, I am not a member of the bar, and I do not practice law, but I will tell you that the, ta the patents only last 17 years. So if he's right that these are 50-year-old products, or even 20, or even 18-year-old, well, the patents would have expired. But having said that, I think there's a good chance Tesla has amazing patent lawyers on staff. <laughs> I'm 100 yeah. percent positive that they are looking into every single possibility of where they might be getting into a patent issue. And yes, I'm sure that they are producing brand new patents probably every month on the Optimus. I would agree 100 percent. The prior art, if it is more than 17 years, it is free, it is public. But when you file a patent, you reference prior art. You say it is similar to this patent, but here's how it's different. And if this theory were true, no one could make a, cell, a smartphone but Apple. Uh, the, think of how mechanically similar every internal combustion engine is without infringing on each other's patents. They're all doing the same thing. And by the way, that's how the rotary engine was invented. It was a misunderstanding of how strict patents were. So this guy sat down and he's like, I have to think of a different method of internal combustion. And he did it. And he made a, a very interesting, albeit not very good uh, product. So <laughs> I, I loved my, I had a couple of Mazdas with the Wango sure. engines. They were fantastic. I think yes, I, I'm sad that it didn't become better than it was. <laughs> the, there are apparently limitations that it can't get past yeah. that other other designs have been more successful with. So, yeah, uh, <laughs> no vision, no coordination, no balance. Uh, yeah, you wouldn't be able to get any of these patents. I think that is untrue. Uh, this gentleman says Optimus is like a D grade MIT freshman robotics project thing can't even walk. Now, normally I wouldn't include this because this was before the shareholder meeting when we saw it walk on camera, but we'd already seen it walk like a month or two ago. Yes. So, yeah, is, it, so is it a D-grade MIT freshman robotics project? Yeah, I would say at this point, um, well, first of all, even if it was, it's a matter of how, you, how fast you iterate. The, the issue right now is you have, a found, you have the foundational product. All right, you take the foundational product, now what do you do with it? So if you have a product that can manipulate, it can move things, it has vision, it has the brain, now you need to train it. How do you train it? Well, you've got an issue of balance. These issues of balance are complex. And you know, they are. It's, it's different to balance when you're carrying something. It's different to balance if you throw something. It's, it's even different to balance if you've got that drill motor in your hand and you turn it on, that hmm. centrifugal, that, uh, uh, yeah, that torque. Torque, it induces, the yeah. Torque induces a reverse action, et cetera. So all of these things are issues, but it's a matter of training. Well, two years ago, if you wanted to train this robot, you have to program it line by line, code by code. You're going down and then you're going back in and trying it again and trying it again with changes to the code. You don't have to train that way anymore. We've seen what's happened with chat GPT and, neural and, and large language models. It, the large language models are now training themselves. You sure. take what the output is and you put the output back in and now it looks at the output and it says, oh, well, we can make that better. Um, yeah. This is the same thing that's happening mechanically with the robots at this point. Uh, you can immediately tell the robot, I'm sorry. Uh, somebody said the other day, they sent me a note in my, in my, uh, in, on one of my uh, videos, and they said, I just want one so that I can get my daily massage. And I've been saying that yeah. forever because it will be able, you'll be able to say, a little to the left, a little to the right, a little lower, oh, a little harder. Get, no, not that hard, right. as opposed to uh, any other system. You, you could have an app on your phone down where your face goes and you could just direct it from there right <laughs> uh so the last question this is so dumb so dumb the same the same person said elon also said he would have robots building the tesla factory robots seven years ago is that what well, my question would be what what <laughs> he was talking about the fact that it was going that the uh, that the the model three, 
I believe it was, was going to be built 100%, not 100%, but almost 100% by robots. The term robots he was using in that case would be what you're already used to, the arms and the the in-place automation that would come in and do all these things. Uh, he even had a name for it. I'm forgetting what it was. Something out of an uh, out of a science fiction movie. Uh, he, he called the whole factory would be a dreadnought. That's right. The dreadnought. Okay. It turned out he was unable to use these arms and these typical automation processes in some of the places where he thought it would work. So he had to he had to fall back a little. He still had 900 robots working on these cars. And the shocking thing is today with the front end and rear end castings, he is down to 300 robots instead of 900 robots to build the typical car. And yeah, the it turns out that human dexterity for things like insulation and fishing wires through is difficult to replace. But uh, as we discussed before, there are procedural ways to eliminate the process completely. You've seen the robots that put the seats into the car. Those are gone. We don't do that anymore. We put them in before. The whole idea of getting through the door holes is a little silly and arcane. But I would disagree that he said, we will have robots seven years ago. They didn't own a robotics company. They had not purchased Groman or Maxwell or any of the companies that had any of these. This is just cuckoo pants dishonesty. <laughs> so I uh, do want to thank you again for your time. We've got a room. We've got space available in the comments. If anyone wishes to leave one limited time offer, you can leave a comment. We don't charge for that. So I do want to thank my patrons who get early access, bonus content, all that good stuff. For everyone else, subscribing is still free. I know you can also follow Randy. He's got a channel. He's uh, made a couple of videos over there. Uh, I will link that in the description. And he's also got that book, The Elon Musk Mission, co-written with Lars from Best in Tesla. He's also got The Elon Musk Method. And I did get kudos for referring to it as the least effective method of birth control. Uh, <laughs> but that's a different <clears throat> that's a different book. I think uh, I'm sure you're working on that one, too. So uh, everybody else, uh, let us know what we've got. What do we miss? What do we misunderstand? Stay tuned. Stay juicy. And I can't wait to hear from you. Clever robots on the flippity flop. And I'll talk to you soon, Randy.